Here's a little simple phase change schematic. In the solid phase, the molecules are packed as close together as they're ever going to be in a nice solid crystal lattice. When you add heat, you're going to make those molecules vibrate faster and faster until they break free of their attractive forces and form a liquid. Now they're still attracted to each other, but they're not packed as close as they are in the solid phase. Solid to liquid is called melting. And it requires adding heat. If you take a liquid and add heat to that, you're going to break apart whatever attractive forces remain and the molecules of gas will be free to move freely about and spread out as far as they can. This process of turning a liquid into a gas is called boiling when it occurs at the boiling point. If you remove heat from a gas, it will condense to form a liquid. If you remove heat from a liquid, it will turn into a solid. This is known as freezing. If you take a solid and add heat and it turns into a gas, that's called sublimation. If you take a gas and you cool it down and it turns into a solid, that's called deposition. Again, if you go up in phase, you add heat. Going in this direction is endothermic. Energy has to be absorbed to make a solid turn into a liquid, turn into a gas. Going the other direction is exothermic. You have to remove energy from a gas to turn it into a liquid and then into a solid. This is an example of a phase change diagram. What this does is it tells you what happens to the temperature of a substance, in this case H2O, water, as you add heat over time. At time zero, we'll call that A, the temperature is at minus 40. As you add heat to solid ice, the temperature will increase. The molecules will vibrate faster and faster and faster until it hits zero degrees Celsius at time B. Between A and B, it's entirely in the solid phase. Once you hit the phase change temperature, known as the melting point, the molecules begin to break free of their attractive forces and turn into a liquid. While this process takes place, the temperature does not rise. Remember, temperature measures kinetic energy. During a phase change, it's potential energy that's changing not kinetic. So during the liquid turning into a solid or melting portion of this, BC, we have liquid and solid together and the temperature remains constant until the last bit of solid has been completely melted away. Another way of thinking of this is you can't have solid above the melting point and you can't have liquid below the freezing point. So while you have the two of them together, the temperature must remain constant zero degrees Celsius, which is the melting and or the freezing point of water. Once the water is entirely a liquid, the molecules are move free to move faster and faster and faster and faster. Viscosity decreases as the molecules move further and further apart and are able to move faster and faster. Between C and D, the temperature will increase until you get to the boiling point temperature, or 100 degrees Celsius for water. At that point, the molecules are going to absorb enough energy that their attractive forces are completely overcome and the liquid is free to turn into a gas. Just as before with the melting in DE, the temperature remains constant as long as the phase change is underway. You cannot have gas below the boiling point. You can't have liquid above the boiling point. At the boiling point, you have both. The temperature will not change until the last bit of liquid has been boiled away. To find out how much heat it takes to melt a solid, you use what's called heat of fusion. This is 334 joules per gram for water. 
So for every gram you're trying to melt, you need to add 334 joules of potential energy to get that to happen. If I had 10 grams, I'd need 10 times as much energy, 3,340 joules. Overcoming the attractive forces between solid water molecules to turn it into a liquid only requires 334 joules per gram. But turning liquid water into a gas requires that you completely eliminate the attractive forces. This takes a lot more energy. 2,260 joules per gram. About eight times more energy to break the molecules apart when they're liquid turning it into a gas than from turning a solid into liquid. That's not because it's at a higher temperature. It's because it takes more energy to break apart the attractive forces, known as hydrogen bonds. So that is a phase change diagram.